Hey everyone, thanks for stopping in and welcome to the, I think it's, we'll call this part two of the Toro 826 revival and refurb build up, right? So first part really is just, you know, will it run, getting the motor all straightened out for the most part, and uh, then we were able to move forward. And so that's what we're going to do in this episode. We're going to take it to as far as we can within the time, for, you know, period journaling, and we'll see how far we can get. we got a number of things to solve. The, uh, this is not a snowblower yet, so let's get started. All right, sorry for the noise, guys. The heat's on. Just to get you a close-up. This is steel, so we're going to need to, we're going to have to kind of de-rust this wire wheel and some acid, some Scotch-Brite. Um, everything else moves, so we're going to go in for a lubrication. All right, we've got a nice grease fitting here, and it's, it's about as clean as I can get it. I'll see if I can wipe it a little bit with a rag, but... It's been washed. We'll get all of these joints. I'll show you in a bit. Um, now here we want to get these tires off. Let's get these chains off because they're kind of broken and maybe we can fix them. But I think maybe, you know, we'll be better off fixing them if they're, if they're off. We don't really need them, but uh, let's get them off first. Get the tires off and clean the axles and just get a good look in there. Make sure that these rims come off. I've got some penetrant on this and I'm starting to just work it. It was turning the shaft, but now it's spinning on the shaft, which is not a bad thing. All right, I'm going to work this a little bit longer, get a little bit more penetrant in here. It's, it's stuck, but it's I don't, they're not frozen. Chains aren't coming off yet. It's starting to move. Whatever it is, it's not in terrible shape. Look at that. That's oh, good. It's got a brass bushing in here. Right? When do you get that? And see? It's driven, right? See the little cogs? They're like gears. And so this is the shifter for it. That's just beauteous. Look at that. Uh, we're going to start off with just a penetrant. And I would also recommend Whenever you're restoring something like this, refurbishing or reviving, right? I would also recommend, uh, after the penetrant, chase it with some just regular motor oil or transmission fluid because you want to get these things going again. And I know, well, you're thinking, well, you know, you need to get the right stuff. And no, because you need to get it moving first. And... The only way you're going to do that is with lubricant. And with mechanisms like this, look, there's a spring over here. With mechanisms like that, um, yeah, oil and penetrant to start off with. I'm going to do the other side. That came right off. Now, this one, that's because they're bushed, right? The bronze oil light bearings that are, or bushings that are in those rims, right? They're not going to really lock up on this. So I'm going to start off with blowing with the compressed air, right? Get some of the gook off. Then I'm going to put some cleaner in that, some penetrant, some oil, and I'm just going to keep working it. And then I'm going to figure out what actuates it and how it works and put the spring back and everything. And we'll, we'll dress this down, right? We'll get, it, we'll get it all cleaned up. So let me just go a little bit further in. Okay, I just worked the oil. Now the levers are up top. We'll show you them in a minute. I can put the spring back in a bit that it took off. So just good motor oil. Well, we got to spin these shafts, but we can't do that yet. All right, I got to put a, a, something through this hole. We'll clean the shafts off next. So I'm working on the other side too, and then we'll wipe it, and we'll come back with our chain wax. Chain wax is what we'll use on this one, because we want more of like a grease. Let me clean off these first. These are pretty nasty. This one here is. So I'm going to do a wire wheel, and then I'm going to go get my uh, crocus cloth. So, all right, same thing up in here. I've been working oil in, but also penetrant. Not worried about getting oil or grease on this yet. We're going to be cleaning that. This thing's just a little bit stuck. Okay, there it goes. Now it's starting to move. So we got junk over in this area here. I mean, if I have to, I'll we'll wire wheel it. Whatever you can get wiped down and off 
especially with a machine like this that that needs a service like this oil penetrant a little wire wheel action all right so it's not moving fully the way I want it so this is first gear neutral okay so this is neutral right here where we are now all right and it should be over more it's moving well And I just keep putting a little bit of oil on, penetrant, and just checking to make sure. Feels like there's just a little bit of pitting on here. But point being is, we'll get to that if I have to hit it again. But we want to get, again, just keep putting oil on until the oil comes clean, right? If you're getting black and gook on my finger, right, it's not as dirty as it was. So here's what we're working on. So this is neutral. It should be back further. And then that's first, and see we're running out of room. That's second, and we're already at the end. I can't get to third. All right, so I think I'd just show you a little close up. So this is first, that's second, and we're out of room, all right? And then we'll pull it over to neutral. Now, I was actually getting stuck. It wasn't even going into neutral at one point. So we're almost there. If I put another little bend here, I think the bend it's got to be relaxed a bit to pull this whole wheel over. See how it wants to go? Watch. See, it needs to be about here. And then I think we'll be okay. But either way, right, let me see what I'm going to do. All right, I got my torch ready. I got my hammer here. I got my fire extinguisher. we got to be real careful because there's fuel. And it's really the best place to get it is right about here. But we'll... I really don't like the idea of, of rebending that because the angularity is kind of important. I guess right in this area here, just to try to see if we can heat it, get it red hot and then throw it into the third gear and then that should do it. I'm not getting any traction. Keep a tight frame. Let's see how I want to get there. If I can get heat in the right spot, it doesn't really matter where. We just need heat. Now, it's getting hot. I can only go from one side because I don't want to take a chance. It's going. It's almost there. Alright, let's try it. Not yet. Almost. There it goes. That's it. Alright, put a little bit of a bend in. Alright, let's try that. Let's see, I'm running out of gas. got about 500 pounds left. Let it cool. It went in. Yeah, it feels like it's in there, no problem. Oh, yeah. That's it. Okay. And then first. And then neutral. All right, let's cool it. Yeah, it's, it's fine. Let's just give it a cooling. A little bit of a wet rag. So we don't damage anything. Perfect. All right. Now, now what I did was, and I'll show you in the other camera, this linkage here, I tightened up because this spring washer's on it. So I, I tried taking this piece off. You're not getting it off, right? So this is the solution. So what I did was I tightened this up, right? So we don't have all that slop so I could get a good, right? It, could, it probably could be a little bit better like if it went over a little bit, you know, bent a little bit more, but I think over time, the third gear is pretty much the key you're gonna be in. And it's going in good. And everything is moving now. Uh-oh, wait. 
I just hung up. There we go. It's why we don't really want to change the angularity too much. So from here, why is it a little stuck? Could be a little bit of, yeah, there's a little bit of junk right over in there. So we're going to clean that up again. I want to pull this nut back off and put some blue Loctite on it because it's a little loose. They're, they have their uh, sort of like lock style uh, nuts that have the crimp in them, you know, that one little crimp. Um, but I think just a little blue Loctite. And it looked like it might have had a little Loctite on them. This one's binding up a little. So that's why they need to be a little loose. Right? They can't be, you know, they have to have a little slop in them. And that's why they put a spring washer in. And then this pivots a little bit. This piece pivots, so we need to get that lubed up. And we still need to come up with some kind of, there's something that goes there, right, that's missing. And why that is, I don't know. Um, we don't even know what that is. What is that? It is the auger drive. Okay, so that's your auger drive. So we're missing some kind of piece that goes here for the auger drive. One thing at a time. All right, <clears throat> I actually found this piece searching yesterday for something. It is the piece we need. So, but we got to clean the threads up and I got to clean all this stuff up. These shafts all cleaned up good. I got some oil up in there. We'll put a little bit more, get that bearing. It seems like it's okay. Um, when I try to pry on this, it seems fine. And I'm still wiping. I've got the chain pretty much well lubed and we'll wipe that down again in a minute. But what I can do now, I couldn't do before. I mean, I could move it with this thing, but I couldn't completely, I mean, listen to that. Just one hand now, all the way around. No issue. So I'm using the oil to help. I stopped using penetrant, we don't need that. Now I'm just using the oil to help me clean and lubricate. And we'll, all right, so we got our neutral. It feels nice. Okay, and then first gear, second gear, third gear. All right, really, really nice. And still, I'll so just keep wiping whatever I can. And we'll replace some of the oil with just a good chain wax. And then the grease where it goes. All right, getting further. So I just keep, you know, I've been lubing it, wiping it, blowing with the air. I went over this again with the wire wheel. Same thing on this side. All right, I'm gonna wipe up now. Same thing in here, these shafts over here, and anything I can get to. Getting oil on the chain wherever I can. All right, we'll start putting chain lube on. It's getting, it's getting to the point where it's starting to move now. All right, it's pretty clean. All right, we're gonna get, just gonna put a little bit of emery cloth on that, polish it up. It's really starting to look good just to get you in a little tighter. Still got to put some nylock on that. I'm going to do that before. Well, all right, I'll come back in, in a minute. But I've got everything I could get with the rag, basically blowing with the compressed air. I think we're pretty good. I'm just going to put a little bit of a polish on the shafts while I'm here. It's not going to take me long to do this. Yeah, it needs it. Actually, this one. Well, actually, that one, too, has got pimples on it. This side had a little bit more yuck on it, a little more grobbly rust. It's almost done. Let's make one more pit. Like, more pitting was on this side. So, you got to polish your shaft. You know what I mean. All right, shafts are perfect. We'll get grease on them later. Tighten up the collar. And then I pulled this bolt off, clean with the uh, brake cleaner, blue. So, because, you know, you want them, you want the, everything clean. Because <clears throat> the blue lock needs to be on a clean, clean threaded mm -hmm. surface. And then I just loosen it up a little bit. That's why these spring washers are in there. Because it needs a little bit of play, a little bit of give. You see, it's just, it's perfect. And that's just with what little bit of oil is on there. And let me show you this mechanism up here. All right, so that's third, second, first. Let me put the light on, we'll do it again. <clears throat> All right, so that's neutral. 
Okay, first, second, third, all right? And so we're in third, second, first, and then neutral. I think before we get to this piece here, so I'm gonna start off with just chain wax, best thing you can use. Let it all go in a little white too. We want to get some chain wax on this. I'll open that bearing. These bearings are oil light, so they're kind of permanently lubed, but that doesn't mean we don't want to put a fresh coat. Yeah, that looks so nice. It's nice and greasy. I want to make sure that these shafts are coated so that they don't rot. Yep, I can get to it. Oh yeah, it's pushing out grease. Okay, I'm gonna wipe that. We'll just wipe up, try to wipe up some of the grease. If you can see it, the grease fitting down there. Can you see that? Anyway, look at that one. It, it's, it's all greased. Let's get this cleaned up now. All right, so I just degreased it. I'm gonna take some 80 grit, and we're gonna start off with just, you know, getting rid of the rust as best we can. It's been here for a while. It's okay, but it'll grip really good. But the thing is, it, it will wear that rubber. It will wear that rubber. It'll wear out your rubber. Okay, I went over it with some fine grit. So we did the 80 first, but we still have a couple more things to do. So I'm just gonna take a minute out, load up my rag, clean rag, my right, brake cleaner, and we're gonna do the rubber. Make sure there's no grease on it, get all the oxidation off of it. That's good. And then we're gonna wipe the steel plate. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of acid on it, right, my metal prep. Now this has gotta sit for a little bit. We just want, we don't want a lot. And then the next time we'll go with the Scotch-Brite and then that'll really allow it to eat in. And then we gotta kinda of spray it, we'll spray everything down with a little bit of soapy water and blow it. Doing good. I just cleaned off a few other spots. And I'm gonna do the chrome handle too. Oh yeah. We'll do a few other things, but no, I'm not gonna get too carried away. We'll just let that sit just like that. It's almost done. And um, I wanna just wipe off the handle and then we're gonna put some acid on it. Well actually here, we'll just do this. Take the take our Scotch Bright. And while we're here. Okay. All right. There's still a lot of rust on it, you know, but I didn't finish. I just did it quick. And that stuff that you see on here, that's sort of powdery, that's zinc oxide. That's a precipitate. And then look. That's to stop flash rust. All right, we're ready. All right, this, this, is, this is nice. So... Coarse grit, fine grit, then scotch bright and acid, and it's actually quite fine. And you can leave that on there. We'll just wipe it off, though, real quick, before we close up. I think it's time to close it up, because we have to put... There's, there's these uh, sort of locators, a little... Bra it's a little hook that goes on, and it's part of the cover. The cover's a mess, so... So I just banged the pan out with a hammer, knocked off more of the rust, straightened it a little bit more... Um, and then these little bungs here, um, just hit them with the ball penis hammer and kind of distort them a little bit. We want to make sure that the bolts that go into them will grab. All right, so I wanted to show you. These are clips. I thought they were springs, but they're clips. Problem is, this is not tightening up now. This is not tightening up. That's what happens to them. This has to get tight. This has to be here. If that were to fall out in the snow, that would suck. All right, so I'm going to pull this pan off. We're going to wire wheel it outside while it's still nice out, 
and uh, get it cleaned up a little bit more. And then I'm going to weld nuts on it. All right, so I wire wheeled them. All right, I might as well do both, right? And okay, it's better, but I'm just going to go over it with the cookie, the Scotch Fry cookie, just to kind of feather it in and get rid of a little bit more rust. Then we're going to put it in uh, acid. Well, well, actually, first we got to degrease it because you can't have any grease, right? Oh, the acid won't work. And then after it's degreased, we'll we'll dip, you know, run it in some acid for a little while, give it 15, 20. We'll take a break and then dry it really good. And then I'll put rusty metal primer on it and that's it for tonight. Tomorrow we'll weld, we'll weld all these nuts on because it's a lot of nuts to do. I'm going nuts here. Okay, let's see. I mean, the wire wheel got most of it, but this is just to knock off a little bit more and then fade in any of the paint that still might be flaking. All right, now we can treat it to a little bit of super clean. You know what, just, just the regular stuff. I'm just gonna let it sit for a bit because there's still a lot of gross on it. And once it's good and clean, and we'll just do a quick acid etch. Because the rusty metal primer will do a good job too. But if I leave it like this, right, it'll disappear because I'll get busy and the year or two will go by and, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to get right to it, right? So it's not a restoration or refurbish completely yet, but this is obviously a need those nuts on there. I have to deal with it. Oh, it's going to get a little bit nicer. All right, let's leave it for a little bit. What? I'm sorry, what? What? What do you want? You want one of these? What? Yes or no? Yes or no? What? Not one? What? He doesn't like to talk. What? What? Come on, speak. Come over here. Sit down. Speak. What? He just throat ball him. All right, you ready? Okay, ready? One, two, three. Good boy. He's happy now. Okay. All right, cleaned off. Let's help it to dry a little bit. Just warm it up. All right, how's this feel? It's nice. Oh yeah, we gotta get in there. Okay. Oh, it's nice, it's warm too. Now we can lay down some Rusty metal primer on this, and depending on if I'm up late, maybe I'll throw a little paint on it too, just so that it's done, but we're good to go. I'll be back. Can't wait till tomorrow. It's time for a little bit of dinner, eggs, and watching Wes work while I work, while I'm eating. The next morning. What do you think? All right, because it, you know, it got late yesterday and I couldn't really do anything else. So I started the refurb process. This way I'm done underneath, right? Now we just have to focus on these. I made these black. Um, I've actually was looking at some pictures of these machines and there were, I saw a few that were black and I figured, well, number one, why use up all of my, you know, really good colored paint that I'm going to need? For the rest of it but you know what this is black this is well was black right we'll go with this all right now we got to grind and set up with the welder we got to get nuts on this all right so i took my whiz bang wheel and the hammer and just kind of reshaped everything went around the whole thing all right got them all cleaned up got a whole bunch of nuts this is quarter 20, same thing that's on like Briggs engines, and just passing my step bit through, clean up the holes, make sure we get a bolt in there properly. And I'm just gonna bolt all these nuts up and go around with the welder, and I'll see you in a bit. Uh, once that's done, we'll put a little bit of quick dry uh, just to cover over these areas so we don't have problems. And we should be good to go. Okay. No burn throughs, the metal here was a little weak. Three spots on each one and 
of course I scratched it on that other. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of primer on it. Fast primer and fast dry black. Put it aside and I'll clean up in here. And we'll, we'll install it. Alright, got grease on everything here on the shafts. Yeah, I screwed it up a little bit. How dare you! You know, mixing and matching paint, because the it's a different type of paint, uh, the fast dry. Plus, things aren't drying, right? It's freezing out. Uh, what can I say? I screwed it up. Okay, we got this piece installed. All I had to do was just drill out the, the factory arm here. Just a little bit, just massage it. And massage. And then these are a little sloppy, but we've got it set up pretty good. Watch. And it stays, right? And that's the auger. The auger. Alright. Now I want to show you guys in here, you see? Right? See how those cleats go together? So right now, right, it's free spinning. So you can move it, and if you want to turn it, right, because if you're hitting a bank of snow and you don't want it in posse, now you want to engage it, you shove the lever down, and she grabs. See? Sweet. It's a little bit, you know, probably a little bit uh, worn, but I didn't look it. You know, it's got to have some slop in it. All right, this thing's looking real good. I think we're ready to get it down, All right? But it's really heavy. And you know what? I need some help. Hey, help a guy. Give me a hand over here for a minute. What? What, Arch? What do you, what do you want? I just need a hand real quick. Why? What? I'm putting away the welding cord. What do you want? What? It's Saturday. I want to go home. Eventually. Alright, I'm just going to throw a little bit of chain wax on a few things. Just because everything is so dry over here. Alright, choke's on. It's a little choked up. Now, I pulled up these rods, right, because that'll also make sure it's in neutral. And it's in neutral. Um... We have it set to basically slow. We'll go about midway. And let's give it a pull. Probably need to put a little more gas in it. So let's run this thing up. Okay, the auger's stuck. We don't know why that is. Could just be frozen. Yeah. Yeah, something's wrong up in here. Could be bad bearing or something. There is some kind of spring over here. So we need to get in there and see what's going on with the auger. Um, why it doesn't move. And there's no clutch control, per se. Um, once you put it in gear, it's going to start going, so you have to be able to shift it. The other thing is, is the, this is your clutch, right? So let's put it up on, on its butt, and we'll at least get the transmission to go. And then we're going to have to figure out what's going on with the rest of it. Now, it did smoke a bit because we've had this thing over on, you know, the front. I've never had one apart. All right. Let's give it another shot. So this is kind of like your clutch. All right, let's go. It could just be stuck from years of sitting, or it could be broken. Unlikely. Maybe we need a little bit of choke. Yeah, we need a little bit of choke.
think we screwed up. I think I just hit the spring over here with one of these chains and it chains and it fucked it. It messed it up. Yeah. All right, we got to make a spring. We screwed up a spring. So that's a problem. Um, maybe one of these chains hit it. But it has reversed. Third is not working. We don't know why. <clears throat> so we have to go back in there and fix it. Reverse is working. We screwed up a spring. Hopefully I have another one or we'll make something for that. And let's bring it up in the air and see what I can do with the auger. All right, so far so good, All right? So this actually spins. Uh, I can't do it with this hand, really. We gotta get another belt, that belt's done. It's not even the right belt, I don't even think. But this is spinning, this seems fine, we'll put a little lube in that. In here is a mechanism, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a spring over here and it's connected to the scraper. Now, we'll get in a little closer in a bit. All right? And I think what happens is the scraper pulls back or shoves forward and it maybe engages or disengages this whole drum. I don't know, I've never had one of these. This is the first time for me. Any of you guys know it has any history? I'm gonna search it on the web tonight. I sprayed oil in there and penetrant. <clears throat> Everything seems to be okay. Um, what we need to do next is I screw up the spring, which is a problem, right? Because of the chain, I think, hit it. So we gotta take this back off. Let's get in there and see if we can fix that. Put it back on, we're gonna take the tires off and maybe fix these chains so that I don't have this problem again, or take them off. Nice when things are lubricated, at least. Oh, I screwed up again. How dare you? Let me see what I can do. All right, maybe, is this one of these things where I, in order to get it off, right, I'm gonna have to take the bottom cover off? I thought we were done. Yeah, there we go. Well, it's not terrible. It's just a little verklempt. It's a little verklockte. All right, maybe I can rewind it. But we got to fix this, right? This is, you know, this is this is my helper's fault, right? Right here, right? This is exactly. He's gone. He already went Saturday. I want to go home. Okay. All right, we're going to have to deal with these changes. I was going to take them off, but you might as well just put them back the right way. Instead of using tie wraps, see, I told him. All right. And that's it for part two, guys. Thanks for watching. We got a little bit further. We got some issues, and we're going to have to iron out those issues. It's still not a snowblower yet, but hang in there. Um, I'm here to tell you that we're, we're, we're going to get through, well, almost all of them. Not done, but uh, yes, yeah, stay tuned for part three, and that's coming up next, and I will see you there. Oh, just garage! Like and subscribe.